Welcome to lecture number four, The Permanency of the Internet, Our Immortal Digital Self. Everyone has a digital persona that parallels our real-world life. Our digital self may accurately mirror our real life, or it may deviate from our real-world life through anonymous usernames and avatars. Our real-world life is shared and accessed by a relatively few people, and eventually is terminated through our death. Our digital life, however, may be shared and accessed by millions, both before and long after we die. Our digital life has the potential to become immortal. The potential immortality of our digital life is due to several factors inherent with the digitization of information, the removal of the limitations on storage of information, and the World Wide Web. First, everyone leaves digital crumbs on the Internet trail. But unlike the crumbs left by Hansel and Gretel, the crumbs left on the Internet trail are permanent. A video posted on YouTube stays there theoretically forever. Post a photo on Flickr and it will be there indefinitely. Write a blog article and it will turn up on a Google search until the end of time. The Library of Congress is archiving all tweets and Twitter just recently announced a feature that allows a user access to one's past tweets. Your health records are now stored in an electronic form. Even your email messages may be retained forever in one or more digital databases. Second, others post and store information about us on the web, often without our permission or knowledge. A third factor in making our digital lives immortal is the power of search and the rise of da data aggregators. They have eliminated the concept of practical obscurity and have made even the most minute and disconnected bits of information about us retrievable, regardless of the passage of time. Fourth, every physical form of information about us, records, photos, audio, video, correspondence, etc., is now being digitized. Fifth, the previous limitations on the retention and storage of information are essentially being eliminated. The coalescence of these five factors have enormous implications for our privacy. Prior to the Internet, all save the relatively few very famous could escape their past while living by moving to another city, state, or country. Similarly, one's past actions and reputation were soon forgotten after they died by all but a few family members. Today, however, one's past, or at least one's digital past, accompanies us throughout life, regardless of location, and lingers long after our physical death. In fact, the ubiquity and permanency of the Internet has spawned a new cottage industry that attempts to manage one's online reputation and persona both before and after death. Even Facebook is sensitive to what happens to our Facebook page when we die and offers multiple options, ranging from deleting public access to the account, although not from Facebook servers, to, quote, memorializing the account to allow post-death postings, end of quote. Let's watch a brief video about an app that allows your Facebook account to essentially become a digital will. Last words. We all hope we'll get a chance to say some, but not knowing when or where we're going to die makes it a bit tricky. Thankfully, with If I Die, it's a whole lot easier. If I Die is a unique Facebook app that allows you to leave a message that will only be published after you die. Simply install the app on Facebook, leave your message, and choose trustees that will be in charge of reporting your death. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, I don't remember scheduling an appointment with death anytime soon. And you're right, but so is death right around the corner. So don't wait until it's too late. Leave your message today. It can be a bid farewell, a favorite joke, a long-kept secret, 
an old score you wanted to settle, or even some valuable advice. If I die, what will you leave behind? Contrast this view of the immortal digital self in the United States with the much more privacy-oriented approach by Europe. In January 2012, the European Commission proposed new data protection and privacy rules for its 27 member countries. One of those new rules is the, quote, right to be forgotten, end of quote. Under the rules, anyone can request a company to delete information about that person, and the company may be fined up to 2% of their gross revenues for failure to comply unless there is a legitimate reason to keep the information. The proposed rules have come under heavy criticism from historians who do not like the concept of people rewriting history, from media companies who rely on online information in reporting on people and events, from law enforcement who are concerned about the destruction of potential evidence and information relevant to public safety, and from online service providers like Facebook and Twitter who have raised numerous concerns about their ability to comply. In our next video, we will continue to explore the challenge of being anonymous and the clashing paradigms of privacy and transparency in the context of unwanted publicity and John and Jane Doe litigation. In the meantime, watch what you write, watch what you post, watch what you buy, watch what you like, watch what you read, listen to, or view. Remember, Google never forgets.